While doing a training with a team of occupational and physical therapists, I noticed a shift in the energy in the room when I started talking about teaching students to name their nervous system states. I could see the attendees moving into a state of what I call cognitive disequilibrium. When new information comes into our brains, it has to sort out how the new information aligns or doesn't align with what we already know, value, and trust. I paused my presentation to check in. There was concern that naming nervous system states would confuse students who use colored zones to determine where they are in terms of expected behavior. We asked ourselves, can using zones and naming nervous system states work together, or is there a conflict between the two approaches? When students are in different colored zones, it's important to understand their nervous system states. The zones don't readily align with nervous system states. For instance, someone can be in the red zone and still be in ventral, meaning they are able to express their anger in a healthy way while seeking resources to return to regulation. An important aspect of knowing what the student's nervous system needs to move from dysregulation into regulation is observing the state of the nervous system. Whether a student's nervous system is activated and mobilized with disorganized energy in a sympathetic state, or shut down with little energy to cope in a dorsal vagal state helps determine the best path for intervention. Next, I thought about key concepts I've learned from Dr. Portis and Dr. Dana regarding befriending one's nervous system. There are eight key points that can complement the zones approach and expand our understanding of behavior viewed through a befriending lens. Number one, the nervous system through neuroception is always looking out for signals of safety and danger. When using colored zones, ask, is this student's nervous system experiencing signals of danger? And if so, is this part of the behavior response I'm seeing? How can I increase signals of safety for this nervous system? Number two, instead of asking the student, what do you need right now? Ask, what does your nervous system need right now? This is a befriending approach focusing on the nervous system and its needs rather than personalizing the behavior. Three, the vagal break is responsible for increasing or reducing the heart rate. When the heart rate gets going too fast, it puts on the brake. When the heart rate is needing to go faster to respond to a signal of danger in the sympathetic state or to rev up to be more active and playful, the vagal break releases. This creates flexibility in the system. This is how students are able to transition from more organized activities to quieter activities and vice versa. When students move into a zone of unexpected behavior, ask, is this student's vagal break working as designed? Can this student move from more active states to quieter states? If not, some vagal break retuning activities will help. I created a video explaining ways to create ventral pauses for retuning the nervous system. Four, to move out of zones of unexpected behavior, there is a hierarchy of responses to make moving in and out of zones easier. The bigger the feeling, the more energized the system will be. More energized systems need bigger movements to match the bigger feelings. The nervous system has a difficult time going from disorganized mobilization to a quieter, calmer state. Match the energy with the movement. Deep breathing may be too big a leap for the nervous system when a student is in an unfocused, energized state. Try larger movements and then notice the nervous system shifting to a place where calmer moves are welcomed. Five, the nervous system has a need for co-regulation. We tend to focus a lot on self-regulation when implementing regulation programs. Paying attention to what nervous systems need includes providing co-regulating activities as an option. For instance, if doing the lazy eight breathing, ask, does your nervous system want a friend to come do the lazy eight breathing with you? In school moves, we use the bop bink bounce approach with figure eights. It creates options for bigger movement when the nervous system isn't ready for a quieter movement like lazy eight breathing. Yep, I have a video for that too. Number six, when using zones, also use the three C's of safety as a befriending approach. The three C's of safety are choice, context, and connection. Please see my video on this as well if you're not familiar with how to implement the three C's of safety. Number seven, 
In befriending school cultures, staff and students understand the need to retune the nervous system by looking for glimmers and micro moments of connection, those moments that bring positive energy to the nervous system. Glimmers can be a gesture of kindness, a smile, a favorite flower, or anything that helps the nervous system stay in its ventral home. Integrating the befriending concept of noticing glimmers and micro moments of connection can be helpful with a zones approach. Number eight. And lastly, experiment with naming states. When a child is in the blue zone, ask, do you feel like a rabbit, raccoon, or turtle right now? Ready Rabbit is a place where the nervous system is ready to learn and the student is exhibiting expected behavior for the activity. In the language of the nervous system, the formal name is ventral vagal. Restless Raccoon is a place where there is a lot of mobilized, disorganized, and unfocused energy. The formal name for this state is sympathetic. The behavior is unexpected for the activity and some nervous system retuning is in order. By retuning, I mean helping the nervous system shift into the state where the behavior is expected and matches the activity. Restless raccoon may feel unsafe and there is a threat of some kind that the nervous system is detecting. There is too much energy for the activity and it needs to go somewhere. This is why I integrate movement into all my literacy lessons. It helps the restless raccoon focus its energy and shift into expected behavior and the other students enjoy the movement as well. The tender turtle is a place in the nervous system where there is very little energy in the system and the student is too sad, lonely, hopeless, or scared to learn easily. The formal name for the state is dorsal vagal. In this place, the nervous system needs a co-regulating resource, someone to come and be with the student and provide tender care and support. This is not a place for big movement, but rather gentle movement to shift the energy and help the student move from dorsal vagal toward ventral vagal. If you are a zones advocate, take what is helpful from this video and leave the rest. If you're not using zones at this time, consider trying out the befriending approach and teaching students to recognize their nervous system states. This will serve them well throughout their lives and help to create more regulated humans in the world. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for all you do for humans in the world. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for spending your time with me. I really appreciate it.